Hello everybody, this is Pi Frenzy from Team Get This Round, and today I am back to bring you the first match between Roxkis Livco and Alien Invasion's Sapla. And I made a huge blunder. That is because in this best of five, I thought it was a best of three, and I missed the very first game in the series. So I was like, well, this is the best of three. Actually, it's the best of five. So... This is game one, and in game two, I say that's game one, and I'm wrong, and so on and so forth until the last match. I'll be like, this is blah, blah, blah. okay. So, besides all that, excuse me. Uh, on the where I was getting the replays from, it had a. Uh, it I I just looked and I saw, like, AI, it, it showed all on the left side, Alien Invasion Saplo, and then versus Roxkis Livco and then Antec Attack. And then below the, below those three there's another one that says Roxkis Livco versus AI Saplo Antec Attack. And for some reason my brain was like Herder Uh I'm pretty sure that AI Saplo versus Roxkis Livco is different than Roxkis Livco versus AI Saplo. I don't know why, but that's just what happened. So, excuse me for that. So, uh, hopefully you will not be too aggravated by that. Um, but we do see the spawning pool first. I'm not trying to hide it or anything. Uh, so, Slivko is playing relatively safe. You know what really sucks is that uh, I'm actually recording this after I recorded the last game in the series. So, I'm kind of like, I know who wins. That sucks. Oh man, you guys don't understand how bad it is, but uh we see we see four yes, this is a hatchery er, Nexus first here for Sapo. Are you saying, well uh I'm I'm gonna go Nexus first, even though my opponent went spawning pool per, spawning pool first, but uh the hatchery was only delayed by like fifty resources, pretty much nothing. The probe probe didn't have the best micro. Uh, by the way, since this is game one, uh, I probably should be talking about the players, but actually I do that in game two, because I thought that was game one. So if you uh, just kind of don't care about me yammering on about crap, then, uh, okay, wait, 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 let me rephrase that. I said that completely wrong. If you want to hear the players' awesome feats, then go to game two, because I honestly probably cannot present it in the same way well and factual way that it did in game two. But uh two links out for Slivko pretty much just to be like, what up, probe, you can't deny my third dog and also to scout. Uh throwing down the pylon, barely in range of the uh hatchery. Uh this might delay it by a little bit. Actually, delaying it by about a hundred resources, he's gonna need to cancel this before it finishes. But uh, it's really not that big of a delay because he's instead just spent most of the stuff on units and drones. But uh, it is a small delay, small victory for the Protoss. Uh, the 25 resources invested, I guess, is worth it. Put his opponent behind by more than 25, I guess, technically. Uh. The one thing to keep in mind, though, is you gotta look at the units lost tab. But not only units lost tab, but there are two things that matters in the game to determine who's ahead. It's the units lost tab, but also the spending tab. And if you look at the spending tab, you gotta see who's mined more. And I can And since this is constantly changing, I kind of can't add this up right now. Eleven hundred. That's okay. So he spent four thousand, forty-one hundred. So the Zerg currently has mined more and lost less. So currently Zerg ahead. Uh, that that's the way to do it. No, looking at units lost only is not the greatest way to determine it because, well, I mean it's a good way. Ooh, but we see four gateways being added. This is five gateways in total. You see a sixth. Oh my goodness, this guy is just massing these stargate these stops and stargates gateways but we have the uh standard one pylon powering every single vital uh structure i just just had a huge stutter i was like Arr. 
Man, I'm not not on my A game today. But uh, Roxas Slivko. What is what does he know about this? Well, he knows his opponent has expanded, but he doesn't know anything about the main base, so he doesn't know about this. What does his opponent know? Well, his opponent knows does not know about the third. That's one thing he wants to check out is the third. Because if he sees his opponent has the third, he's gonna be like, "All right, man, I can do some major damage." Plus one is almost done. Warp gate's gonna be done. This is gonna be a huge timing attack by Saplo. Uh, does he have? He is getting the forward pylon here. Uh, he, uh Slivko does not see. It's just barely out of the range of him. Nice place pylon. Nice play. He's, oh dang, he's getting super greedy with this pylon. I, I, it's actually out of his range, but he might have seen the probe and might be a bit worried about it. But huge, huge warping of zealots and stalkers. And plus one is finished. So Zergling is going to melt like goo to those zealots. But uh, our Zerg player here opted to get gas way later. So amount of all boost is going is to finish super late. So that's not very good for him. I think he, he might want to rework his strategy of when he's getting gas. But all the drones being pulled off this third looking like it's going down. With Ten roaches being made right now trying to defend against this, but this seven gateway timing is just so strong at a safe He might be able to end the game now. Well, maybe. We gotta check out the new tap. Although Sapo is just massing roaches. It's ten zealots. Oh and seven stalkers. But the pro to drone is just huge. But you gotta remember, I think all these drones and on two bases isn't really that efficient. But uh, a lot of spine crawlers being thrown down trying to defend this, but uh, I don't know if they'll be able to. The zealots just just, just trolling the circling. That plus one is so strong on the zealots. It absolutely is so good against the uh, zerglings, but the uh, the zerg player getting supply blocked by the death of those overlords, and is going to continue to be until he starts losing some uh, units. But uh, the zealots up in the fray, killing a lot of the roaches, but. Uh, they must have died, but it's only Stalker versus Roach now. The, they, there's an even number of each, but uh, I think the Stalkers with good micro will be able to win this fight. But it's looking looking like he doesn't want to risk it. He just wants to warp in more guys, but a lot of more Roaches being a lot, a lot, a lot more Roaches being produced to try and combat these Stalkers. Also warping in Zealots because well, plus one Zealots will just go to town when when uh, they can just sit there and smack away at the roaches faces and uh, Saplo is saying well I have no uh, no economy no tech behind this I gotta end this now uh, forces cancel on the macro hatch uh, trying to create a wall and the queen goes down so some less injects less units coming in so really once these units die there are no queens to make any more units I think if Saplo Saplo has a huge much bigger force if he can end this right now uh, he, well, he really just needs to because all well, there's there's, no, there's only one queen, and it, it can only puke once. But uh, he's backing out. He's saying, "I need more reinforcements." He could alter uh, optionally, optionally. He could place another pylon up here, but he doesn't really want to because, well, he's got a giant small stalkers, and his opponent has one queen to eject. With macro has coming down to the main because he thinks, "Well, I need to, uh, I need to have something. I gotta have some kind of army response, a response for this." Man, I am terrible at talking today. But Zealot getting owned by the drones. And the drone's trying to own the stalkers, and he's just pulling back and back and back and back to get to his reinforcement. It forms in a huge, another, uh, another huge wave, but there's a lot of roaches. But look at that versus that. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is winning. Uh, but uh, more reinforcements being created by the Zerg player, and the Zealot just going to town. Not that many lings. I'd like to see more lings created. Well. I almost I, I just said uh, I might want to see more links here, but if he creates more links, these he just make more zealots, and he's coming in with six zealots now, because well he can't afford to really warp in anything more than that, because well he only has seven gateways, and he's actually chronoing some of the gateways, but the zealots fighting in a, a pretty good position, off creep so, oh, but he actually, he, he, is he gonna be able to defend this right now? I think I think Saplo should just go for it. He should just he should warp in, but then. Just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. Like he's gotta kill all these roaches. If he kills all of these right now, he will he will be in a huge advantage. Once again, killing more overlords, just trying to put his opponent farther and farther behind. Uh, he could, oh, he could if he wanted to be really greedy. Go ahead and grab a third. But the queen is done. It's being pulled down. So uh, Slifka is actually gonna be able to reinforce this. 
but he's pulled off a lot of drones, and now the supply is actually in the favor of Sipo, uh, for the first time this game, really. Uh, my, my, my tongue just, I just broke, oh, I, I paused the game, well, I was trying to go to the Unis tab, that, this is how self-efficient I am, screw it, we have the same amount of drones as we do probes, but before he had a 20 drone lead, so, so this code has just lost so much in the stack, even if he does hold it off, I think he'll be way behind. Um, I, I don't think Slithko can really do much here. Yeah, there's the GG. He he had two roaches and 32 drones versus 17 Protoss units. Seven zealots, ten stalkers. Not really much he could do there. He didn't have any resources either. His mine was slowly but surely almost out of minerals. Not really. His is about a th had about a third of its minerals left. But um, uh, just uh, just Saplo able to just really abuse the fact that he went Nexus first, his opponent went Spawning Pool first, and uh, he just that uh, the and his opponent also took an early third. He was able to just abuse that with a nice seven gate timing. Was it the? It was not the actual seven gate timing I usually see uh, sometimes from uh, MC who gets uh, he only gets one gas, but. Uh, Still, what a great play by Saplo, able to abuse the fact that his opponent uh, went spawning pool first and then two fast hatcheries afterwards, and he was able to go Nexus first. Uh, uh, Saplo is just chilling and killing. He's he's doing well. That was a good game by him, and I am I am proud of him for this. So, uh, yep. Once again, thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe because I commentate on many games a day. Usually, usually I commentate about a series a day, maybe more. I might go commentate more today because I'm just feeling like I just want to play some StarCraft. I do not want to play StarCraft 2. The game scares me sometimes, but I want to commentate some StarCraft 2. I want to watch. So uh, once again, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Actually, you'll hear me next video. See ya.